Right, so getting good at this one thing, which is creating cool environments in Blender, has completely transformed my life and what I do. So this has basically just given me the freedom to be able to get up and do whatever the hell I want all day, any day of the week. Now, most of the time that happens to be just working on this because this is what I like doing. But yeah, having the freedom to choose whatever I want to do all day, any day is, is pretty insane. All right, so in this one, I just want to talk about how to get really good at creating environments in Blender, all the stuff that's helped me over the past couple of years, how I've learned all this, and what you can do to start making better environments as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, basically just all the advice that I can think of to help you out. So let's go. So before I discovered Blender, I was about 17 or 18, I can't remember exactly, but I was about to graduate high school and I was in this situation where I had, I didn't have a job, I wasn't making any money, I was not going to go to school, I just I knew that like university just wasn't for me and I didn't have any like followers or anything. I pretty much had no direction, it was, you know, when you're in that situation, it's not a great feeling. When family and friends ask what you're going to do with your life because everyone else is going to school and working and stuff. You know, I never had an answer. It was, I always kind of just mumbled and stumbled through it. And it was, you know, it's embarrassing when you're in that situation. And this is right around the time that I discovered Blender. And honestly, I got, I got pretty obsessed with it. So, you know, I spent a few years getting good at it, getting advice from other artists, from other successful artists on like how to actually make this work, watching endless tutorials. But, you know, most importantly, just putting in the reps of actually sitting down and using the software and creating stuff and making art. And doing that is what's led me to where I am now, where I can I can charge a lot of money for what I do. This is my full-time income, it's just doing this. Pretty much most of my income comes from client work. So for example, I think most of you guys have seen this, like the Elenium album cover, for example, or like my art was on the ASUS website for the Pro Art Awards. Like I'm not bringing this stuff up to try and like flex or something, I'm just showing you like, I want to like hopefully inspire some of you guys and show you what's possible if you get really good at this. And so I cannot tell you how to become successful, but I can tell you what's worked for me and What's worked for me is literally just getting as good as possible at this and then sharing that as much as possible. I pretty much only do environments. And so in this one, I'll just talk about, you know, some of the best tips and advice that I can give you to start making better environments and all the stuff that's helped me over the last couple of years. So I've got three major points I wanna cover. So the first one is prioritize getting good at lighting and camera angles above everything else. The reason I'm saying that is because when you start learning this, there's so many different areas you need to cover. Like there's modeling, UV unwrapping, geometry nodes, particle systems, uh, sculpting, the time, like there's, there's so many different areas that you could focus on and learn and put your time and energy into. But none of it, none of that stuff really matters at all if you can't capture what you're looking at in a pleasing way. And that's what lighting and camera angles do is it allows you to capture things in a nice, good, like pleasing to look at way. So you can imagine you could have like the best geometry nodes, most amazing geometry nodes set up ever combined with like the most intricate sculpting you've ever done combined with the best UV unwrapping combined with the best models. If you don't capture that in a way that's nice to actually look at, it doesn't matter what's in there. It's not going to look good. And you know, the opposite of that is true as well. Like if you only are good at the lighting and camera angle part, the rest of like the technical stuff can kind of suffer a little bit, even like you can have stuff that's technically bad, and light it and capture it well, and it will look good. And so that's why I think that's the most important skill to learn first. Like that's the biggest bottleneck that you have to get through to where things will start looking good is like, can you present it nicely? And that's exactly what lighting and camera angles do. Just one tip for lighting really quick is just keep it as simple as possible most of the time. Um, my scenes generally have like one or two, maybe three lights in them. You know, once in a while you'll have one that goes like way over that and there's way more, but like, Almost all of my renders, most of the time, have one or two lights at most. And when you when you keep it simple like that, it's so much easier to deal with because you're not like you're not dealing with 50 lights and trying to make 50 lights all look good and fit together. So you don't have to worry about that. It's just like easier to deal with, less lights because there's less problems to go wrong. But it also just happens to look much cleaner most of the time and much better. You might be surprised if you've never tried this, like keep the lighting as simple as possible. I like to minimize the number of lights as much as I can. And that just makes it much easier to get good results. Um, one tip for getting good with camera angles is literally just use a camera. So you can use your phone too. Like your phone has a camera. It, it's the same thing. Just practice going out into real life and getting, trying to get good photos. Um, I would also recommend just following photographers online and just trying like looking, look at what they do, watch photography tutorials 
and listen to how photographers talk about the angles they choose and the settings they use and all that type of stuff. And that applies directly to what we're doing here with environments. Um, and like I said, capturing things in a pleasing way. That's all photography is. So I'd recommend learning at least a little bit about that and that'll translate super well into 3D. Okay, the second thing I wanna cover here is get access to good models and good textures. So I'll talk about textures in a second, but models, um, this could mean just get good at modeling. I think that's a really important skill. I've seen a lot of artists who don't know how to model and it looks like a pain in the ass and it's, it's, it's very convenient to know how to model something. Like you need some little structure. You don't have to spend an hour going to find it. You just quickly make it and it's done and you don't have to worry about it. It's super, super handy knowing how to model. It's also valuable having a big asset library and having places where you can go and just buy models too. So some places that I use to get my models are one, I model it myself, but also CG Trader and Turbo Squid are gonna be the biggest just general marketplaces for 3D. Sketchfab is pretty good. Uh, this It's hard to find free stuff. And also you gotta watch out for like a lot of the free stuff is actually not CC0. So it's required on their site that you have to give attribution to a lot of the models. So just watch out for that. But there is some cool, good free CC0 stuff if you look for it. The next place that I use to get models myself is Quixel Megascans. So there, it's, it's a great service, but there is one caveat is that with the latest versions of Blender, this is not really fully compatible. I'm not really sure why they haven't fixed it. I've asked them about it. They haven't told me why or when it's going to be fixed. So it works. It's just janky. You, you just have to kind of rearrange a few things and it's kind of annoying, but it still works. Uh, so Quixel Megascans is pretty good. Same for textures. Kitbash 3D is pretty good. If you don't have a really good computer though, it is pretty heavy. The main point here is just get like organize models and get a collection of good models that you can use. That's gonna make it much easier to build good looking scenes. Okay, for textures, uh, yeah, Ambient CG is probably the best free site because you can get free 4K textures. Textures.com is also pretty good. Um, depends what you need. Just both those websites are just free texture websites. Texturing isn't really something you need to get that good at as a skill in itself because like there's so many free textures that are really good online that you can just use that are done that you just download and apply that are finished that you don't need to like, there's not that much you need to learn about doing that other than how to set it up once. And you know, like the most you'll have to do is like maybe make a thing darker here and there or like adjust the roughness a little bit or like turn down the normal map slightly. Like there's not that much you have to learn with texturing. It's just like a very simple system that you have to learn to set up once and then you know how to do it from there. At least that's true with the kind of stuff that I do. Like if you're working on like really up close models and you need to like really dive in and uh, adjust and like mix together different textures and edge wear and uh, apply like really intricate grunge and that kind of stuff, then yeah, maybe you need to dive into that a little bit more and uh, you can't just get away with slapping on a free texture and calling it done. For the kind of environments that I do, uh, it's you really don't need to know that much about texturing, it'll kind of just come naturally as you get good at 3D in general. So a lot of people have been asking me about my asset library and also about showing my full creation process of making an artwork like start to finish. So I actually have a new course available where I show you the creation process, the full creation process of three entirely different artworks made from like 0% start all the way through to 100% finish, explain the whole way through as easy as I can. It also comes with three different asset packs. So the first one is the fantasy asset pack. So it comes with like, arches, intricate pillars, treasure chests, barrels, pots, etc. The next one is the sci-fi slash industrial asset pack. That one comes with uh, rooftop antennas, wires, just industrial pieces, buildings. And then the last one is the photo scans asset pack, which comes with like rocks, roots, uh, just terrain, just stuff to add life to your renders. All these packs are very easy to set up. You just download the blend file, select all the objects, right click, mark as asset, and then just save the blend file. And then you're pretty much done and you can just instantly use them in any project you want. If you're not familiar with how to use the asset browser, there's also a tutorial included in there that's showing exactly how to set it up. That's just in case you don't know how to use it. There's a lot more that I didn't mention here that's included with this. If you wanna check that out, just it's the first link in the description of this video. The third tip is work efficiently. So this is not a video on productivity, but you know this is a video on how to make the best renders possible. The thing is, one of the key things to make the best renders possible is actually being productive, staying focused, being organized, all that type of stuff. I'll just give you some quick tips here, but the first thing is stay focused. And if you're not good at that, 
get good at being focused. When you go to create a render, have like a, an hour or two chunk of time, even if you don't use the full two hours, just have a chunk of time that you are just purely doing work and you're not distracted at all. At all. So like, don't have any videos in the background, don't have any podcasts, don't have the TV on, don't be checking your phone especially. This is something I struggled with a lot while I was trying to get good and as soon as I cut all that stuff out, it, like I realized it's so much easier to get much more high quality work done without any distractions. So please trust me when I say that like you will destroy the people who are not doing this if you start doing this. The next thing is stay organized. So this means like files on your computer, like all the textures, image files, whatever other, you know, organize the blend files in a way that makes sense. Just be organized with all that, but also like keep the asset browser organized, um, keep your blender windows and your default file organized, all that type of stuff. Like just have a workflow that's as efficient for you as possible. And that helps with like, you know, the days when you're not motivated, it's so much easier to just get into this and just start making something and turn that into like, just get into the flow really fast. That's one thing. The other thing too is like while you're working, it's just faster. So you'll just save time. Uh, and you know, that adds up a lot over time too. One more thing under this category of work efficiently is whenever you start a render, start with a scene blockout or like whatever thing is gonna have the biggest effect on what the overall image looks like in the end. So like I've made this mistake plenty of times too where you start working on something and then you like what you do straight away is you start modeling some intricate little piece that's not gonna be the main focus. And then you spend all this time on it and then you zoom out after like 40 minutes and then in the frame, it's like this tiny piece that is like not an important part of the picture. And then you look at that and you're like, you just realize you've just spent 40 minutes on like 1% of what you need to do. And it's just very depressing and not motivating at that point, what you're looking at. And it's very easy to lose all hope at that point. Cause you know, you zoom out and you see the frame is still like empty still, except for this one little thing. I've done that a lot. I think it's much more efficient to just start with the things that have the biggest overall effect on what the picture looks like. So this could be, like I said, some people do this with a scene blockout where they, they just take like cubes and like cylinders and they literally just add these basic shapes around and like map out where all the objects are gonna be. And then you can add like basic lighting and a, a basic camera angle from there. And that way you have something to look at straight away. The other thing you can do is just use pre-made models like drop in kit bash models or drop in models you downloaded somewhere. And that will be like your starting point for like blocking it out just as fast as adding like basic shapes, but these things are actually finished objects. So I do that a lot. You could also just start with the object that has like the most importance in the image, like the, the focal point of the image. So for example, like in this one here, I started making this with the fan itself and then everything else I kind of built around that. So I didn't start with a scene blockout necessarily, but I started with the main object that takes up like the most space in the frame. And so that, that's what allowed me to, you know, continue working on it and have actually stay motivated throughout the entire thing and have a clear sense of direction right from the beginning. All right, if you made it this far in this video, you might wanna go check out that course I mentioned earlier. Like I said, it comes with um, three, I create three different artworks start to finish. You get access to all those blend files. There's also those three asset packs that it comes with that you can use in literally any project you want. You just drag and drop any of those things in there. Um, it also comes with a bunch of other stuff too, like a couple other packs. And there's also sections on like inspiration, staying motivated, how to get ideas, how I optimize my workflow and how I get our work done extremely fast. Yeah, honestly, I, this is, I know this is something like I am selling, but I'm honestly like very, very excited about this. I think it's, it's actually sick. So if you want to go check it out, it's the first link in the description. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video was useful and I'll see you around.